Greetings, dear ones. I am crying of magnetic service. And I want to talk to the family. This group will never occur again as it is now. It is absolutely unique in history, in time. And there'll never come another day when the exact same souls are in the exact same room. And you all know this. And yet perhaps the profundity of it is lost on you. Well, you might say, well, it's that way when I go to a movie. It is that way when I go to any meeting. But it's not. For synchronicity brought you here today. Synchronicity had its chance. Put upon you energies of love. Of lesson of learning. Even with this, there are some in the room still who do not believe that what is taking place in this chair is real. But the synchronicities are here anyway. The energies, whether they fall like seeds on barren ground, are still there. And here is the difference, dear one. That the seeds that were given to you this day are forever. And a decade from now, if some of you who are unbelieving this day would have an epiphany. Or to go to that place where you would wonder if any of these things were real, those seeds will plant themselves. And you'll remember what happened today. You remember the soul six days old that you touched today. Six days old. Can you imagine what that life is? What her akash must be? Can you imagine what surges in her, the, the, the very DNA in her body? A body that the father could lift with one hand. Profound it is. What you've done for one another this day, and some of those here still don't believe it. There are some attributes at hand regarding the protocol of moving from one dimensional paradigm to another. And this is the study that begins this year. The recalibration of all things you thought you knew. The recalibration begins into a multi-dimensional reality paradigm. It is behavioral. It requires action. It requires belief. There will be those who will say, my life is just fine, thank you. I don't need to move it in any direction, thank you. You might say, I was just here to take a look, thank you. And if you're one of those, I will tell you this, there'll come a day when you're going to believe. Or as the world moves in this direction, you continue to live in a comfortable three-dimensional paradigm. It won't be comfortable forever. And then there are those ready to move now. That is why you sit in the chair. There are those here who have been in this study you call metaphysics for many years. And then there are the ones 
who have only just discovered the shift and are so interested in it. And what do you have in common, even the doubter? Old souls each. You've been here before. I'll give you information I have given before. The one who is the most obstinate of all of you in belief and thinks that this is a sham is the oldest soul among you. And the reason that there is the block that there is, the block of belief, comes from so many lifetimes where they have been discounted. So many lifetimes that have ended early. So many lifetimes of pain and suffering. And some of you are sitting here and you're saying, and I'm not going to go to there anymore. I'm not going to believe that again. I'm not going to I'm not going to wake up happy where I am. I know who's here. Fear of enlightenment is what I'm speaking of. And you might say, well, that's not me, Cryon. And I know that too. There are many here, so many stages of old soldom. <laughs> So let me give you a couple of hints. And this now is for those who have been in the study for a long time. The paradigm that is shifting is the paradigm of enlightenment. Old souls will awaken first to the paradigm so that they may journey into that which is a multidimensional relationship with the Creator. As they do that, they put light upon the earth that otherwise would not be put there. The old soul is the one to awaken first. The old soul is the one who will reach out and say, I want the tools now. The old soul is the one whose ears perk up when you say, change your DNA. And there is a reason why you're so interested. It rings so true. And you remember, and you remember, and you remember. Earth was not always like this, old soul, and you know that as well. Not too long ago, even the scriptures told you of those holy men and women who would live hundreds of years. And you read those words and you say, this must be a metaphor. It is not. And that was only a few thousand years ago. That human beings had lifespans that were grand. DNA worked better than it does today. Before the wars of the planet. Before the energy shifted to what you see now. And so what I'm saying is that the old soul who is so interested in changing their DNA is one who remembers what it was like. Who remembers a hundredth birthday as the halfway point. Who remembers health even in the wilderness without the modern diseases of cancer and all the other things that afflict those here who remember what it was like to walk through a life with energy with spiritual knowledge well I challenge you to go there remember it in your dreams in your meditations as you shut your eyes and you get excited about it because that is where you're going next. And it may not be in this life. But you'll be here to see it. I like to say yet again. 
that the entire paradigm of spirituality and the systems you thought you knew about are changing. It becomes controversial for the old soul who has awakened early in their life and has trained in this protocol called metaphysics feels they know how things work and they don't anymore. Not like that. So I speak then not only to the old soul, but the old metaphysician. Are you willing to take and understand and be flexible with a change of energy that will rewrite what you think you knew? And there will be those still who say, God never changes. What is this about? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is this about? You're saying that all the things are changing. The relationship is changing and you say the paradigm is changing and worship is changing and meditation is changing. And I say, yes, it is. And you will say, how is it possible? And I will say to you, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. But the human being is not. Hmm? And it's the human being who's moving off the peg of the old energy starting to creep slowly toward a goal some of you don't believe is even possible Pleiadeans in the room remember every single one of you has Pleiadean DNA every one you ask the questions that are so nebulous. Who were they really? What did they do? I will tell you. They lived on an earth like this. They went through a transition like this. They had a free planet like this. And when they made that transition of enlightenment, it was the beginning of a thousand years of quantum learning. When they came through the other side of that, dear ones, they could be in two places at the same time. They could have lifespans that only planets have. They could be one with spirit. And you carry around their seeds. And the first thing they did is to come here. There is so much hiding from you. I want to give you an instruction. Dear ones, don't be afraid of the dark. There's an old paradigm that says that darkness exists on the planet and you got to be careful of it. Some of you assign it to entities. Some of you just do what is intuitive and assign it to other human beings. Some of you even see it as a dark force. And you don't want anything to do with it, do you? If you saw it coming in the hallway, you'd turn around and go the other way, wouldn't you? I want you to forget that. I've given you these instructions before, but you have to hear it now. What you carry in you today is far superior in energy than any dark thing on the planet. It is far superior to any dark group on the planet. There is nothing that can touch you as long as you are projecting light. Forget the paradigm that says that there is a darkness here or you have to be careful here. If you wish to, 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 to paste that upon yourself and be careful all your life, I will say to you, you will never change. Because the paradigm is about light, and that is what is happening now. A shift that allows the individual old soul <clears throat> a field around them that is so magnificent and quantum 
that it pushes light and divinity wherever you walk. And you may not feel like a lighthouse, but that is the paradigm we started with 23 years ago. You are pushing light today. Darkness, as defined, is the absence of light. It is not a unique and separate force of its own. Do you understand this? It has no power when light is there. In fact, darkness disappears when light is around. It is not a succinct entity that creates its own power. It is simply the absence of light. If you have light, it will retreat from you. There are those in the room that need to hear this. It has stopped them from moving forward because they're afraid of it. And you might say, well, that's well and good, Cryon, but you don't know my family. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. And you'll say they're very dark. Yes, they are. And I want to tell you, when you go stand among them, what happens? What happens? There's no more darkness. And for a moment, and for a moment, they can think differently. There is no evangelism in this process. But there is shift and there is change. For where you stand, no darkness can be. If you go to work, there can be no dark thing that touches you, and they can try all they want. And there can be manipulation, and there can be drama, and there can be emotions. But it won't be with you if you don't want it. And eventually there will be human beings who see around you something different. They'll see that you don't have an agenda. They'll see that your ego is submissive to love. Don't fear that which you make up. My partner was succinct today, and we put him through the ringer so that he could sit here with his filter open and say these things to you. Do not fear what you think is there, for it may not be there at all. Children will grow up and ask questions in this new age that you always hoped they would ask. No matter what their training, there'll come a time when they will soul search and ask, is God bigger than I was told? And I and giving this message to you for those in here who needed to hear it. If you're in a situation that you think is compromised spiritually, that is to say, your belief is not that of another's, and you want to know what to do in that situation, I will tell you, you sit and simply love God. And the light that you have will be seen by all. Because you don't argue. And you don't push. And you don't react. All you do is to love. And I'll tell you, there is no grander tool than this. Silence of the light worker who knows who they are. Do not be quick to respond to those who would wish to push you into an altercation of spiritual knowledge. It would be better to be quiet. Let them think they've won and love them in the process. I think you understand what I'm saying. You hold the light. You hold all the cards. Use the tool gracefully, 
peacefully, silently, and with great wisdom. This is the message of the day. And if you add it all up, you'll say why. That sounds just like the training to be a master. And you'd be right. Those are the attributes of the ascended masters of the planet. And you know it. And so the day comes to an end. And you will leave this place. Some of you will be changed. Others will be confused. And I will tell you that no matter what state you think you are in, we are with you and always have been. For the system says so. We walk with you all your lives, cradle to grave. Did you see the infant today on the stage? Did you see the family around her? And I don't mean her parents. How many of you saw it? Celebration when it was there. Six days old, and through synchronicity, she walked on this stage, and you held out your hand and healed her. Now you tell me, you think that was an accident? That is the definition of synchronicity. And some of you are here today in the same fashion. So you could sit here and hear who you are. Go from this place differently than you came. Go with us. And so it is.